be in the group. And I'm also recording this session for our YouTube channel. And I'm really happy today to have Mina with us. This is the first time that you are speaking with an Israeli seller group, yes? Yeah, it's the first time I'm, I'm excited. Great, okay. So I guess um, this, uh, this is uh, actually exclusive for our group. So uh, I heard about you from uh, different colleagues and uh, you are, uh, let me uh, give you a compliment, a rising star in our industry. <laughs> and um, I, awesome. I see you Thank everywhere. You so much. And, and if I see you everywhere, that means that you have a lot of interesting things to say to a lot of people. So I had uh, to have you also on board here with our uh, group and sellers. And we have an interesting topic actually today. And, uh, and this topic is actually for those who are have a limited budget, short budget sellers. And um, speak a little, we will speak a little bit about what is going on right now on, on Amazon. We know the bids are rising and rising and getting super uh, expensive uh, to do advertising, sponsored advertising these days on Amazon, and especially in this uh, kind of new period of, of doing Amazon. And um, you always look for new strategies, tactics, thinking out of the box, how, how can I break through and compete and, and, and win some uh, market share, even though I'm really uh, limited in my budget. And I guess there's a lot of tactics out there. So I will be really exciting to hear from you. So for those guys that, uh, that don't really know about you, can you uh, tell us a little bit about your background? What do you do right now? A little bit like a short bio. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I like this topic a lot because I um, the I started my Amazon business uh, with 100 units uh, on my credit card, and my credit card had like a five thousand five thousand uh, dollar uh, like max limit. So I can relate a lot to uh, to you know hey, how do you start uh, you know uh, like running ads when you have very little budget, and so especially since I did it with supplements, so which is like very very difficult to do. So my uh, background, I came from uh, chemical engineering and chemistry. I graduated uh, with my bachelor's, master's, top of my class. I worked in corporate nine to five, uh, many years, big companies. I kept getting promoted. I moved from one company to the next, to the next. And uh, I just felt like I, I was very unhappy in my life. I always thought that maybe the next uh, promotion was gonna make me feel better or the next raise or the next position. But it was, I was stuck in this uh, uh, like cycle where I, I was waking up in the morning, uh, commuting to work, going to work, working long hours, coming back, um, you know, going to the gym and then sleeping. And I just felt like my life was being taken away from me and I, and I wasn't doing what I love. And so in 2018, I was having conversation. I was on vacation in Egypt uh, with my parents. I was having a conversation with my dad and I was like looking through a lot of supplements so ever since I've been maybe like 12 years old, I've been addicted to like, not addicted, but obsessed with supplements. <laughs> I'm addicted to supplements now. <laughs> you can see there's like a bunch over there sitting on the counter and I have a whole cupboard of them. Um, but I, I really, I mean, I would go to the GNC or whatever in the, in the malls and I could spend hours and hours looking at every single supplement. I don't know why, but I think maybe it's a part of it is like, you know, I, I want to get bigger and better and faster and all of this stuff. And I'm looking for like all of the, the shortcuts and the, and the tricks when, you know, when there's really no, not a lot of shortcuts to tricks. Um, so um, I was doing the research and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm looking uh, for a, a supplement, but better than these ones, because everything that I'm looking at, I don't like it. He's like, why don't you make your own? I said, I already make my own at home. I'm bringing the ingredients, mixing them. Um, I'm just looking for something that has all the stuff or at least most of it. He said, well, uh, you know, what if you started your own company? And I, I always thought like, that's probably like way too expensive to start a supplement brand. Like you need a hundred thousand dollars. You need a factory, all this stuff. He said, just look into it. So I looked into it. And if I bought the raw ingredients from Amazon and mixed it in my kitchen, I could sell it for uh, like $30, $20, $30 and make it for $5. So that's what I did. I ordered the ingredients, mixed it at home. I ordered the bags from Amazon. I ordered everything from Amazon. I just got the labels in a, like a label printing company. And, and uh, I made the product at home in my kitchen for $5 and, and was able to sell it for like 20. And so I- Did you I go directly to the American market? 
Yeah, I mean, I was in America. I was in college. So, mm. uh, or sorry, I was in college. I was uh, in America, like living uh, normal, you know, past college. But um, I, I first made it for myself and I tested it on, on, on myself. I, I'm an MMA fighter. So I trained very, very, very intensely. I sweat a lot and it was working very well. And then I, I uh, tested it on my teammates and they loved it. And so that's when kind of I, I said, okay, maybe this is actually something good. Uh, and then I got it on Amazon. I figured, you know, if I'm buying all of my supplements on Amazon, let me figure out how to get it on Amazon. So I called the Amazon Seller Central, got it on Amazon. And then um, th I became obsessed, right? So I, I started attending every single uh, like um, webinar, YouTube video, podcast, uh, asking people like you, going into all the groups, asking a million questions. And so I started figuring things out. But the, the you know, the one thing that I knew was really changing my uh, my sales was reviews and PPC. So the more reviews I got, the more sales I got, the, mo the more money I like put in PPC and the more I messed around with the PPC, the more sales I made. So I figured, okay, that's, that's you know, this something is going on here. And so I got deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And then, uh, you know, like fast forward, like six months later, I got really good uh, at doing PPC. Uh, I was doing $4,000 a month in profits. Uh, on Amazon. And so I got fired from my job and I decided to go full time. So that's when I went, uh, got in full time. It was April, 2019, six months after I started the business. Um, and then in that time, you know, I think August or something, people were asking a lot of questions in the groups. And I was like, you know what? I know the answer to this. So I would share and share and share. And next thing you know, this is where you start seeing me everywhere. So I was just answering a lot of questions. And I decided to post some videos about uh, PPC. Uh, because to me, I was like, okay, I already, I already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars wasting it on PPC, but it was, it was, uh, you know, revenue would come in and then it would go spent on PPC revenue would come in, go spent on PPC. So I already knew a lot of mistakes that I've made in all of this stuff. And people will say, oh, do you shut, do you take a keyword and you shut it off uh, once you launch it? And I said, no, 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 no. I tried that <laughs> and it ruined my sales uh, for like a week. So I, I was just sharing my information and people loved it. So that's how I kind of grew in the in the industry. And then um, in early 2021 is when um, I was, you know, someone approached me. And so I made them a proposal that they said, we want to test you against other agencies uh, first to see if you actually know what you're doing. So they tested me against six other agencies. And I, you know, I, I did better than the other agencies and they were big, big agencies. And then um, and then, yeah. And then from there, I said, okay, well, I, I, I pretty much, uh, I must know what I'm doing with PPC if these people who raised hundreds of millions trust me. And so that's where Trivium Group started and, and uh, you know, we started helping more and more people with PPC. I still have my brands. I started a few supplement brands, you know, in the whole journey. I'm, I'm uh, trying to sell one of them now. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the full story. That's, that's uh, fascinating. And I guess this is, the number of people that kind of went through this Cinderella story of, you know, quitting the job and I did nine to five job and starting with small amount of money and really hitting it on Amazon. It's, it's always really uh, encouraging to, to hear. And I guess uh, uh, your story also will encourage some of the people here. So let's jump in right away to the topic. So you went through the same things, right? Because you started with low budgets. So uh, you must, uh, have encountered the same problems uh, that uh, small sellers, small to medium sellers are encountering. Um, first of all, how would you like, uh, what would you say to these sellers in, in terms of mindset? Like what should they think and understand before they go and start PPC with small budgets? Okay, so the, 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 the goal of the PPC is what a lot of people I don't think uh, are aligned on. So. PPC, the way that it works is um, you are trying to bring people into your listing in the cheapest way possible. So there's two ways to do this. Number one, if you advertise and you, you put in a keyword, uh, whatever it is, and then a keyword shows up and, and uh, you're going to get that ad. Someone is going to click. You're going to pay money. They're going to go into your listing. They're going to convert. Uh, you know, that's kind of one way. The other thing is if you do that enough times with one keyword in PPC, that your organic goes up and now you're converting for free because you, you're getting the organic uh, traffic. So the, the main, main, main goal of PPC is to bring people to the listing. So the first thing obviously to make sure is 
um, let's understand some of our numbers. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen now and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll explain to you what some of the numbers are uh, that you have to like keep an eye out on. Because before we get into all of the PPC tactics, if your number is not, uh, it's math, right? If, if uh, you know, if you're paying uh, $10 per person to come into your listing and you need three people, you're paying $30 to get three people in the listing and then one of them converts and your product is $30, you're gonna lose money because you're paying 30 and, and it's making 30. So uh, here's the, the, the first thing and I, I'll kind of break it down. It's a, it's a simple equation. Um, so you have your current PPC spend, right? Whatever whatever your current PPC spend, and this is if you're already launching, if you're not lying- Can you maybe on just rest. zoom in on this specific uh, area? Yeah, just enlarge the percentages. Great. Okay. okay. Perfect. So, you know, let's say you're spending $2,000. You're going to get a certain number of sessions. So you can look at this PPC spend. You can go into your campaigns, set a date range, whatever. You know, you can say, okay, February 1st to 28th. And then you can go into the business reports and do the same thing. So you can kind of, in the business reports, you'll get the sessions. In the PPC spend, you'll get the number of PPC spend. So this tells you how much you're spending per session. So a session is a unique visitor into, into the listing. And this is blended, by the way. So this is uh, organic and uh, paid. So we can't separate them, unfortunately. Um, but you know, if you look at the whole thing together and then you make some changes here and there, you should get to a point that makes sense. Um, so if it, it's costing $1.33 per person to come into your listing. You look at your conversion rate. Your conversion rate is 25%. That means that you need four people to come into your listing for one of them to convert. So the, the math is pretty simple in this case, right? Four people for one conversion times $1.33 per person means $5.33 per conversion, okay? This is an important number, your cost for one conversion because you know your sale price, you know your Amazon fees, you know your cost of goods, and you know your profit per unit. If my if this was if I was selling it like when I started 1999, I'm losing 80 cents. Okay, so this is the first thing that that everyone kind of needs to make clear is how much is your profit per unit and and, and uh, what is your cost for one conversion? Because if if these numbers don't work, there's no point in even doing uh, PPC. Um, now let's say that these numbers, you know, you're, you're at 23.95. Okay, so. After ads and everything, you're making $3. Where is the issue? Is the issue in the conversion or is the issue, issue actually in the PPC spend? So, Guy, let me ask you this. If the PPC spend is $2,000 right now to get 1,500 sessions, and then you bring like an expert like me in to fix it, how much do you think I can improve this $2,000 realistically? Hmm. Well, the conversion rate is pretty high. Yeah. But uh, for Amazon, for, for PPC. For right or general generally but if if you're spending now two thousand dollars i can't make that five hundred dollars it's i'm not a, i can't do magic right so let's say i'm really really good and i make it like you know um like fourteen hundred dollars okay so now the pvc spend you know goes down and your net profit per unit is 4.76 okay so okay that's a realistic i, I cut down your ppc by a little over 25 percent now yeah. What about the conversion rate? Uh, let's say you take your conversion rate to 30. Okay, now th that's now you're at 538. So this is the way to look at it. Okay, what if you increase your, your price by $1, 24.95? You're at 6.38. So this is the way to look at it. There's, there, there's pieces of the equation. Um, don't come in here and it's 2000 and, and your conversion rate is uh, you know 22%. Uh, and your cost is, and you're doing 22.95, and you're like, Mina, my net profit per unit after ads is 143, and say, okay, you need to bring this down to 700 so we can have a good, a good business. Uh, so that's the first thing is understand wh where are the different uh, pieces of the equation that you can, you know, mess around with, and how much you can actually mess around with it. So again, just much practical approach than you know people coming in with, hey, I have 100% uh, acres. I want to cut it down in half. Cut it down to 20%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, you know, same if you go to someone who's doing listing optimization and you tell them my conversion rate is 22%, it needs to be 45% for my business to, to work, to be 4.53. Yeah. 
So it's obviously, as you can see here, it's, it's a different pieces of the equation. So we can cut down the PPC spend by a little bit. We can increase the conversion by a little bit. We can increase our price maybe by a little bit if it's possible and then get to a point where the whole thing makes sense after uh, ads and everything. So that's the first thing. The, the main lever that we're gonna be able to pull in PPC is for the same number of sessions to lower the PPC spend. And this can happen in, in two ways. Number one, or let's say three ways. Number one is launching more campaigns that are uh, profitable. So that are a lower uh, PP, because this is the average of everything that's going on, right? The PPC spend per session. So if you launch campaigns with uh, that are getting you 50 uh, cents per session, then that's going to help lower the average. If you kill campaigns that, that are, you know, uh, wasting money, they're spending you know, the ecosystem too high, not kill them, but like lower, lower the bids or, or if something's spending and didn't make any sales, we can like turn it off or something that will help lower. <clears throat> and the third thing is if we look at our clicks uh, to sessions ratio and improve that. So basically, you know, if you're getting, uh, you know, 300 clicks, and 100 sessions, that gives you kind of an idea that the 100 people are clicking three times and they're getting 300 clicks. So if we can make that 200 for the same 100 people, that will improve it, which basically means the same 100 people who, who still have that same chance of converting at you know 45 people uh, per 100 people will only click 200 times. So your, your spend goes down. So those are the kind of the, the ways this is this is that's it that's the only ways you can improve ppc you're either going to launch new profitable keywords you're going to cut down the spend on keywords that are not profitable or you're going to make sure that you don't have like you're highly ranked organically high high ranked ppc you have also sponsored video and one person comes and says oh let me click this ad let me click that ad let me click that ad and now you're spending you know too much money for for the same people so this is also um, a really great way to kind of uh, do a research before you launch a new product and you kind of uh, prepare for a certain budget for, let's say, the first quarter of your launching. And then you can predict pretty much, right, the average of the bid in your niche and, and, and do kind of a uh, preparation. Do you, do, do you use it in these uh, terms as well? It's hard. It's very, very hard. Unless I have already some data. So if I'm, if I'm going to launch like another supplement brand and I have some data, it's okay. But the really hard thing is to understand, like, how many sessions are you going to get once you start? Spending? And the conversion so, rate, because you don't know until it yeah. starts. Exactly. But, but if you have some sort of, like, history in the past, you can kind of estimate these things at least a little bit. It'll give you a, a good idea, you know. And, and it'll also, you can build this. Like, you can say, okay, I'm going to spend $100 a day. So that's $3,000. How much sessions do I need? And, and uh, you know, how much conversion rate do I need? Maybe I think I'm going to be at 30% conversion rate, whatever. Uh, okay. And then you can kind of see, I anticipate that this is going to happen. So you already anticipate that this is bad if, if you do that, this. So maybe yeah. we need to launch or maybe you say, okay, I'm, I'm okay launching at 2295. I'm going to be breaking mm -hmm. even, making no money. And just to get to a point where, okay, now I have like 200, exactly. 300 reviews. Let's increase the, the price or else this is not going to work out. So this is a really good tool, especially, um, you know, if you're using data that you already have. So now I want to walk people step by step because, uh, you know, we said, OK, what's the goal of the, the PPC is to, you know, get as many profitable uh, sales as possible. Um, and the most profitable sales are the ones that cost you zero money for organic rank. So if we go step by step, the, the first thing that we need to understand is we need to find these keywords first. And then once we find these keywords, we're going to have data on them. And then once you have data, we're going to continue to, uh, you know, uh, let, let them run and get us more sales. So <clears throat> to do that, we start, we don't have anything. The, the best campaigns um, to start with is the auto campaigns uh, and the, specifically substitutes and uh, close match. Those are the two best campaigns to start with. Uh, loose match and compliments, they're you know, they can be a little bit hit or miss depending on your category. So you might have like a high echoes and it will take a, a little bit longer to refine. So, uh, but uh, make sure you separate the four auto campaigns. You can start with loose match and compliments like very low bid because if it converts, you're like, okay, if it converts at 30 cents, okay, great, amazing. You made a lot of money. And then when you start with the, uh, with the substitutes and the, and the close match, 
those ones their goal is to use your uh, list like your seo on on uh, on your page your keywords all of this stuff and then say okay i'm amazon i know this listing is an electrolyte powder i know it has all of these keywords let's try these keywords let's try these asins that seem like they're good competitors and let's uh, see what happens so you're, you're gonna start there you can also start by doing your own research and you can say you know, you have Helium 10, uh, you know, and you have Data Dive. So you can go into Helium 10, you can pull the keywords. Uh, uh, I mean, I can show you quickly, but you can go into uh, amazon.com, type in a, a keyword, open up X ray. It shows all of your competitors, pick 10 of them, launch them <clears throat> in a new uh, campaign. Uh, sorry, launch them in Cerebro, uh, and then look at all of the keywords that uh, they're ranking for, put some filters. So, like eight or nine minimum ranking competitors to show the intersection. Uh, make the position at least position 60 or, or you know, higher, closer to one, um, and at least like 300, uh, 400 searches a month. It'll give you a nice list of keywords. If you don't have a lot of money, start on the lower ones because you know that that one, it's, it's not going to spend too quickly if you're afraid like it's going to spend too quickly. I usually will launch them all uh, and keep start with a lower bid. Again, it depends on your budget. So whatever your budget is, you can always start lower and then uh, work your way up. Um, so you find then, uh, the bid to start with. <clears throat> yeah, so that, that there's there's no answer to this one because um, the way that I do it is you you put a bid, a random bid, whatever, some somewhere in the middle of the range, and then a week later, I know the answer. Mm -hmm. If you, I know, like okay, a week later, uh, the ACOS is eighty uh, percent. Okay, we need to cut that. <clears throat> sorry, we need to cut down the bids. Now, if you don't have money, uh, enough money, like or or low budget. Then you have the two auto campaigns, do some brand defense campaigns because they're going to protect your brand. So no matter what, it's going to be beneficial. Uh, do sponsor brand retargeting. So if people come into your listing uh, and view it, but they don't purchase that you're retargeting them because those are going to be uh, really good ones for you to have just in general to protect your listing. And then pick five keywords, for example, that are, are uh, from that list. The list is going to be at least 60 or 70 keywords. Pick five of them. Uh, broad phrase and exact the broad and the phrase again the goal is to identify some new keywords that that, uh, that are going to be profitable the exact is you're taking a bet on those keywords that they're going to convert uh, and then start as low bid as you can here's what happens let's say you start at 10 cents nothing's going to happen so you can up it to 20 up it to 30 up it to 40 so you can be slow now be careful with this because starting slow you have a honeymoon period so if you have a honeymoon period and you waste your honeymoon period by being like this, uh, yeah. then Amazon's going to say, okay, you sold the, in the last 60 days, you sold on average three units a day, you're a bad product. So be careful of this. And, and that's actually a reason why now in my honeymoon periods, I can afford it a little bit more, but I will spend like crazy and I'll spend like crazy and I'll move a lot of units and then I'll clean, 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 clean all of the dirty ads that spent money and didn't really make any good sales. And then I'm left with something very nice, but also I got the benefit of the honeymoon period. But again, we're talking more if you have like, you know, uh, like if you have a budget and you can't afford to do the, uh, these things, you can start with close match substitutes, start on the lower end of the bid, pr protect your uh, brand. So do a brand name campaign, uh, uh, broad phrase exact, uh, target your own ASINs. Uh, retargeting on sponsored brands. So if someone visits your listing in the last 30 days, but you know, it doesn't convert, you can retarget them and then pick, like I said, like five keywords, again, broad phrase and exact, you can have them all in the same campaign um, and, and start with a lower bid, but always keep the budgets big. This is a, a very, very, very important thing. The conversion will be a lot higher if you have a high budget and a low bid, as opposed to uh, uh, like a good uh, bid and a low budget. And, and I've seen this, like I just went to a, into an account and I looked at everything and it was $50, $50, $40, $50. The only thing, the only change that I made, I, I changed the $50 to $500. Same, I didn't touch the bids. And it, they went from doing $6,000 a day to $12,000 a day, just by wow. it's the same campaigns, it just happened. And actually- they Can you explain the logics behind it? Like the Amazon algorithm sees that you are willing to spend more. So that's why that's they're like kind of- yeah. yeah, I don't know the Amazon algorithm. No one really knows. But what I can say is uh, the only logical thing that makes sense is 
if you have $50 and your bid is a dollar, uh, then you can show up 50 times. So Amazon says, okay, we're, you know, don't show him here because he might uh, get um, 51 clicks, you know, yeah. but if you have 500 and you're showing up and your bid is 0. 0.3, it says, okay, he can, he can get 1500 clicks. So show him as many times as possible, except if there's someone who's bidding more than him, then, you know, keep him under that person because, you know, he's, he's lowering the bid. So That's just really cool tip. Okay. I, th yeah. I think I met it like four or five years ago. People were saying, put high budgets and, and this is something that will help you. But with the time in the last years, we didn't hear about it in the different sessions. And now you're, you're saying it again. So it's kind of, returning me to the to the basics of uh, what we've learned before so guys you should uh, definitely try that yeah and, and and those campaigns by the way in in the person that i took over they were not uh, out of budget they were in budget so they were spending 30 dollars a day but when i moved it up to 500 they spent i think like 80 or 90 dollars a day but it was so many of them that only spent an additional 30 or 40 dollars but they made a total of six thousand dollars more so it was it was a significant lift, um, and, and and that's something that I've always seen. Like whenever I see someone's campaign, uh, like campaign structure, low budgets, I know it's an easy thing that we can change. But this so, is also an answer of for those that saying, okay, if I put a lot of a high budget, Amazon will you know use it all, and then I will lose some money. But if you use small bids, like Mina suggested here, you have the control and and kind of. You, you can sleep calm that, you know, you don't wake up in the morning and say, ah, $500 are burned. So yeah, exactly. Use. Exactly. And, and again, if you're afraid, you can always lower uh, the bid uh, like as low as possible and then work it up. And then eventually it'll hit to a point where you're comfortable. So now I'm going to jump back in um, and, and like talk about, okay, now we're in the campaigns. So again, we, we, we mentioned, uh, you know, you're going to launch two campaigns, uh, which is the two auto campaigns, uh, substitutes and close match. You're going to launch your branded stuff that's going to protect you. You're going to launch a few campaigns with the keywords um, that, you know, th those keywords are going to discover new keywords. Now, the goal here, again, is to discover as many profitable search terms as possible. So I'm going to cover some of the things that we're going to like keep in mind when you're when you're building the campaigns. Um, Create one portfolio for every single product. This will, will help you sort things out. So you can see, okay, this is the Blue Raz uh, performance. This is the Unflavored performance. This is the Energizer performance. And you can very quickly see the difference in the performance and the difference in the different products. Okay. So let's go to this one, for example. Uh, when you're here, you'll see there's 494 campaigns. Obviously, uh, a lot of them, uh, or, or let's make them active. Wait, this is... Yeah. So filter by active status. Okay, seven. So the the goal is we launched these campaigns, and I'm gonna say, okay, we, we launched a, a broad one, um, you know, a campaign. Make sure the no, the name is easy, by the way, to identify. So put a product code in there. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to figure out what what's what in the bulk sheets because you can't sort by uh, portfolio. Um, and then once you're here one ad group only if you have multiple ad groups that's where i see also a lot of like uh, spend will waste amazon we have no idea how it's going to separate the budget so i have here a hundred dollar daily budget i don't know if i have a second ad group it's going to go 50 50 or 90 10 <clears throat> so make sure that doesn't happen targets right now i i uh, stopped going over five but you know don't go like 10 10 is the maximum number of keywords what will happen is if you have 20 different keywords you're going to notice that um, five of them or six of them will have like impressions and spend and the other ones won't. And then you'll think that you're targeting those other 30 or 40 keywords, but actually they're, it's like, they're not even running. I mean, I um, see also that you have two products that you are targeting in this campaign. What do you think about like, putting some, you know, more than one product per campaign? Is that something that you recommend? Yeah. So this is just two SKUs. So this is like an mm. old SKU and then we have the new SKU um so i but don't in general recommend. yeah yeah in general there's two ways of doing things number one is you can have you should only have one uh asin per campaign right so uh, all the skews if you have different skews just put them all in one campaign the other one is in cases where you're variated if you notice that 
one uh, product's performance is way, way better than another, even though they're variations, this could mean that the ads, uh, someone is going into this product and then converting, uh, okay. buying the other one. In that case, you're better off combining them um, and then running the, the ads and letting Amazon choose which one to show the ad for, because then instead of spending on two and only one converting, you're spending on one and, and uh, that one is converting. The other thing is, if you have like small, medium, large, uh, where, yeah, like I like this shirt, uh, the fact that it's small or medium or large doesn't matter because I'm just going to buy whatever size for me. Make sure that you put all of those also in the same campaign. So that's, those are the cases. So variations, it's okay. Really? Yeah, var variations is okay. Now, if you're doing different products, um, some people do it if they have unmanageable uh, portfolios. Like, uh, unman like I mean, I've, I've seen someone do it when they had a thousand SKUs. Uh, and then they're putting like groups of them in the same campaign. And I get it. I mean, this is a whole different kind of conversation. It's not for like really like the, the common types of uh, stuff. <clears throat> so once we launch a campaign, um, first thing is uh, to, to check is look at the placements. If you're performing better in a certain placement, like let's say here in this case, uh, product pages, we're performing uh, better. I mean, these numbers are also, also not great, but that's how it is in supplements. But if you're seeing that you're performing better in top of search or product pages, you can always increase the, the bid adjustment to show up more um, for those, you know, those keywords uh, or, or for those placements, because you know that the performance is better. So in this case, I know if I show up in product pages, I'm going to have a lower ACOS than the other two. Um, this is not great. So you could also lower the bid a little bit and then increase this as well, which means my bid is going to be like 50 cents. But in the case, or, or what's my cost per click here? Um, 257. Okay. So I'm going to say, I want, I'm going to drop it down to 150. So my bid's going to be 150. However, uh, if I put 100% here, I'm willing to spend $3 if I can show up in product pages because I know that my, my uh, ROA is going to be higher or my equity is going to be lower. So that's one thing to keep in mind here. If you notice that you're, you have uh, like a couple of not so good placements and one of them is better, uh, Lower the bids and spend more money on the better one. Uh, Question: um, How long would you, how long there, would you uh, run the uh, how long would you run the, the the campaign for example minimum time before you decide on you know changing the placements the percentages there? Do you have like uh, so your own logics on how much data you want to run before you do some optimization? Yeah, so th this is a good a good point. Um, there's a few parts to it. The first one is it depends on like how much money you're spending. For me, I'm spending enough money that like I've gotten into the rhythm of like every seven days, we should have enough data um, for, for spending and not making uh, sales, for example. Wh whatever my target cost per acquisition is, I'll allow two times that. So if I'm willing to spend uh, $6 to acquire, you know, remember here, the um, the like uh, the cost for one conversion 6.67 so if if this is all i'm able to spend you know and and still make some money then i'll go up to 12 and after that if i go up to 12 and and there's no sales i mean when it spends 13 or 14 even if it does and make me one sale it's still going to be very not profitable so that's the 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 first logic the second logic is um three clicks or more so if if i uh you know, if it's if it's like brand new and I have three clicks or more, uh, uh, I can say, OK, based on these three clicks, I can start making some changes. Um, but you really want to see like some good data, like, uh, you know, in this case, in a month, it did 81 uh, clicks. So 20 clicks, 20 clicks is, is good. Um, I know Destiny says, like, wait for first 20 clicks and then start optimizing. It's tough when you're doing things on a budget, right? It's it's easy to say when you have a lot of money, but when you have very little money, it's hard to wait that long. Because for me, twenty clicks is one hundred and twenty dollars, uh, you know, and then that's one hundred twenty dollars down the drain. Um, so that's the the first thing. And then once we're we're in the actual campaign, you can look at the search terms, and see all of these are are uh, ones with zero orders, uh, but spent money, and I can. And you can be as uh, like uh, strict about it as you want. So for me here, you know, I can say, okay, starting from three clicks or more, uh, immediately negative these keywords because they spent money and they didn't make any sales. Okay, so very quickly, you want to filter out stuff that uh, spent money and is not making sales. That will keep you 
in line with the budget because our goal here is like okay here's the keywords uh, amazon is this is, is testing out a lot of different ones fast acting liquid iv powder gatorade sodium free liquid iv lemon liquid iv so it's testing all of these keywords and this is good for us because it's like testing the bait and when it finds a good one which i'll show you in a second if it finds a good one then amazing we take these ones out but it, but there's some bad ones here so make sure that we're constantly auditing and this is 174 in spend and a lot of it is like one click, one click, one click, one click. So this is, you know, make sure that you're auditing this for for the auto and broaden phrase for the exact. I think this is one of the most frustrating things for uh, for newbies because they have their budget split to so many clicks, you know, and, and have one click per search term and they are not spending enough money to get this amount of clicks to, to clean and, and optimize, as you just mentioned. This is one yeah. of, you know, the most, problematic things that I hear all the time. So actually you mentioned it before, you usually need to spend more in the beginning in order to get clean everything. It's kind of a paradox, but it is as it is. Yeah, you have to you have to go through it. Like um, it's like a cold calling, right? You call like, you're not gonna get an, a deal if you're not calling like 10 people or a hundred people. And then out of those hundred people, you're gonna get 99 knows that one yes. So it's the same. You have to kind of go, unfortunately, go through it. However, you can, if, if you're, some people like let it happen and they're like, okay, where do I go from here? Like they're lost. No. Once you launch a campaign, the, fir the first thing you want to do is you can, every day you can go look at the keywords. What's spent? What's spent money? Okay. This one spent a bunch of times. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, negative it. This one got four clicks and no sales. It's already spent seven dollars. It's too much. Negative it. So you can be like more tight with what's going on. Now we can also filter by. So let's say ROAS is uh, less than say one and a half, for example. For for people, you know, most people one and a half is like very low. Yeah. Um, so this is a one where the the ACOS is uh, uh, too high. Okay, and we again, that's another one spent $22, made $28. We can negative that right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, the, the so this is in, in terms of the cutting spend, but we also want more profitable sales. So we can identify, say, okay, show me everything that has a, a good, okay. So these ones have good ACOS and we can take these keywords out and now launch them in their own campaigns because they've shown, and, and you can be uh, more strict. You can say, okay, only the ones that are maybe up to 15% ACOS. So these ones, you're going to launch them. These ones, okay, 36% ACOS, it's too much for me. It's too expensive. Um, for me, whenever I see a, a, a keyword that has good performance, I'm taking that keyword out and I'm launching it in its own uh, campaign. I'm not negativing it, okay? If it's performing, leave it. Don't turn, turn it off. It's already making you money. Let it keep making you money. And when you launch it in its own campaign, it's not going to compete because as you can see, like these keywords are, are triggering for many different keywords. So it's going to show one time for this keyword uh, and then, you know, hundred times for hundred other keywords. It's not going to always be showing for this keyword. So when you launch it, they're not going to compete because this is showing for a hundred different keywords and maybe one time it's going to compete, but the rest of the time, this one is showing these ones uh, are uh, like just that, going that's through actually very interesting what you're saying because usually in all the courses and all all the mentors are saying if you are duplicating it's uh it's kind of uh uh it's in the big no-no but here in this yeah. case this is kind of uh it makes sense sense because it's just a search term and and, and you in, yeah. and you want to take it as a keyword to different broad right same yes. same targeting and i see that's that's yeah uh, because it makes sense yeah, if you're gonna launch exact two or or if you're gonna launch two keywords exactly the same, you know, liquid IV, liquid IV, exact, exact, yeah, they're gonna compete. It's the duplicate. But if you have the keyword electrolyte powder, whatever, and it's triggering for 50 different keywords, and one of them is a real light electrolyte mix, and then you take that keyword, put it in an exact, it's they're not gonna compete because this one's always showing for this keyword. This one is showing one out of 50 times for this keyword. So um, that's mm -hmm. what I've seen. There's no issues at all for doing that. So the goal is to, you know, now that we've, we launched a few campaigns, we identified the bad stuff and we, we negative did. 
um, if it's exact, we're going to lower the bid instead of negativing it because you can always just lower the bid, lower the bid, lower the bid. Either it is going to convert very well or it's going to stop showing up. So that's, uh, you know, what we want to do. Um, all of the profitable stuff. So that's why, why I showed the placement. You're going to show up more for the things that are uh, profitable. And then you're going to take these keywords that are, are performing well and you're going to launch them in their own campaigns. Broad, phrase, and exact. However, here's one thing. If it performs well here, there is no guarantee that it's going to perform well uh, when I launch it as exact or broad or phrase. I have no idea. But at least I have you know some data that this performed well. Think about it this way. It's like 10 fishing, uh, different fishing baits in the water. And then and, and all the other ones are bad. So I just wasted a bunch of fishing bait. But I take that one and I and I say this one is like a worm. Let me two worms work and these other eight don't. So taking those out and then more and more until the in the water there's a lot of different baits that work well. Make a decision. So that's that's um, kind of the process. Now, for the people who are on a budget, uh, you know, like, you know, it's easier to say if you're starting from brand new, what to do. But let's say you're not starting from brand new. Let's say you have existing. So here's a few things you can do to clean up what's going on. So the, so first thing is, let's look at the, the budgets. So uh, if we go here, I'm going to sort by ROAS. Okay, anything that you consider with a good budget, let's say three X or more, three X ROAS or more, increase the budgets. That's that's uh, the first easy thing that you can do. Okay, now uh, once you're there, we can open up a few campaigns. I'm just gonna open up like a couple. Okay, second thing is I'm gonna go in here, look at the ad groups. Is there an ad group that is a lot worse than another ad group? Okay, I, I can go in there and I can clean up this ad group and, and uh, turn everything off because like I said, we don't know how ad groups, uh, like how the budget is spread. So we don't want to have multiple ad groups. One of them is getting all of the spend, the other one is not. Um, the next thing is we're gonna go look at the placements. How am I performing? I'm performing really good on the product pages. So I'm gonna have a, a high Don't do like this is uh, sometimes like I get frustrated when people do this um, because uh, like, what do you want? Do you want product pages or top of search? In this case, we're trying to get away from the rest of the search. So it's OK. But again, 26 impressions. Um, so our goal here is to just mainly show on the product pages. Um, then we go we go back into the ad groups and let's look at the keywords. So we look at the keywords. We'll go to targeting, we'll look at the keywords. What is uh, not making any money? Okay, we can, I wish I can show. Okay, so right here, this is a good one. This is obviously a branded campaign. So this is why these keywords are not getting any traction, but all of these in, in the last month, they didn't get any impressions. So we can technically turn them off. The reason that they're on is because they're branded. So if anyone ever looks up MMA Nutrition Hydrolyte, I wanna show up. If they don't, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> but if so you prefer like to right, shut them down and not to increase the bid or try and maybe show or that doesn't really matter because you need a specific search of the client you well you could you could uh, um you could increase the bids but i'm saying in this in the case that you're seeing some are performing and then others are not turn them off move them to the new campaigns right because this is essentially as if they're not running like these ones they're technically as if they're not even running. Like, let's see how many impressions they're getting. Yeah, so this one got one impression. This one got one impression. So this tells me, you know, these ones are as if they're not even in a campaign. They're they're unnecessary, okay? Um, and and uh, we can do this also a little bit easier. I believe there is a targeting tab right here. This targeting tab sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But what you can do is, is you can um, you can like show all of the keywords that you're running and you can say, okay, in the last 60 days, spend and no sales. And then eliminate anything that had in the last 60 days, 
spend of over X dollars that you think okay, is too much, maybe $8 or something, anything that spent more than $8 and no sales in the last 60 days, it's not going to magically tomorrow convert. And not, not all of a sudden, it's going to convert. So, um, you know, that's that's the next thing that I would do to clean the campaigns up. Um, and, and I think that will get you to a nice spot where, okay, now your, your steps every week should be go into the bulk sheet, look at all the bids, anything that's uh, uh, not profitable or high echoes, cut the bid down. Anything that's spending money and not making any sales, cut the bids down. Uh, and and um, then we go into the placements. Anything that has a good placement, let's increase the placement up a little bit. Um, identify all, uh, go into the search term report, identify all of the keywords in the auto and broad and phrase campaigns that are spending money, not making sales, or the ECOS is too high. Because we can't lower the bids those because they're in auto and broad and phrase, we can add them as negatives. So that will clean things out as well. And then once you clean everything up, you can start saying, okay, let's pull some stuff from the search term report and launch new campaigns with the keywords that we showed were profitable and then continue that cycle. Cut down the bids for anything that's bad, add negatives, increase placements, launch new campaigns. And then you have this nice little system that is slowly going to get you to one new keyword that, that is uh, converting well, another keyword that's converting. And next thing you know, you have 100, 200, 300 keywords that are converting well. And overall, you're you're converting pretty well. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, you know, nice nice little summary of of uh, PBC management. <laughs> Definitely, it is. But sometimes we need to refresh the you know the basic things. Or uh, I, I guess many people that are here also uh, forgetting things with the time or starting to manage and and, and giving it outsourcing or people bringing in some VAs and. This is some really basic essentials that we need to uh, really take yeah. into consideration. Um, what campaigns in specific do you recommend uh, for beginners to start with, except the, the ones that you have mentioned? I mean, I heard a lot of different tactics like break your listings into one keyword and, and do a one keyword uh, golden nugget uh, kind of uh, campaigns uh, or people who are starting right away to um, uh, to uh, target their uh, uh, you know competitors that and do some refining on the on the campaigns and start to like look into who are worse than you things like that this is the only thing that I can say that's the, like the one trick you know that you can do is if you go into a Amazon and you type in a keyword and in the top right it's gonna be already sorted by like uh, suggested or something or or featured you can change it to newest arrivals and you can see who are the brand new just recently listed the products that are not optimized well that have no reviews that are more expensive than you and all this stuff and you can target those but it's i mean it's a nice little trick it's a hack uh, but it's not going to build your business uh, you know the systems are going to build your business these ones are going to get you a few nice sales here and there um, so that's definitely yeah if you want to do uh, identify all of the worst products uh, that, than you, more expensive, lower reviews, three-star reviews, or all the newest arrivals. So they just came to Amazon. They have no reviews. Uh, their price is weird. It's like 40.00, <clears throat> things like that. Th those are some easy wins here and there. Maybe you're going to get one here and one there. But to build the system, it, it really, it's like I said, you need to have, you know, put the lines in the water, find what's working, more of them, more of them, more of them. And then you have... You know, you have if you have 100 keywords uh, that are all making one sale, now you have 100 sales. If you have 200 keywords, 200 sales. Then you have some keywords that will make you five uh, sales. And so that's how you're, you're growing your sales is finding all of those keywords that are, um, you know, making sales profitably. The final thing is that we didn't touch on because, again, we're on a budget. But at some point, you can start investing in organic keywords. And what that means is you can go and look at your organic rank for the keywords and say, okay, I'm on position 70 for this keyword. Launch, uh, you know, broad phrase and exact that keyword, separate campaigns, one keyword per campaign, spend a lot of money, convert a lot of times and watch your organic rank go up. And once it's up, then you can lower all of the bids for the campaigns. And as long as it stays there, uh, you're now converting for free. And but why yeah, do you split it into broad phrase and exact and not specifically into exact if you want this exact keyword, for example? 
because you, because uh, the ranking improves with more conversions. So if you uh, even if it like if your phrase, for example, and you put electrolyte powder and it converts for unflavored electrolyte powder, you're going to get some uh, benefit for electrolyte powder. Yeah. And so it, it, like it would exact you. It's going to be less frequent conversions. So you want as many conversions as possible for Amazon to say, oh, this keyword is relevant, this keyword is relevant and keep moving you up. But this is also a great tip. That's why I asked you because not many are getting this, is that you can uh, go boost your organic positions even though the specific keyword that you're targeting is part of a longer long tail, for example. And, and, and you don't need necessarily to put it 100 bucks on, on a, an exact and be aggressive on, on this way. Because as Mina said, you need a lot of... Mm, as much as possible conversions from different mm -hmm. variations of this care of this keyword. So it's a great one. Um, a new launch product, would you recommend for newbies to have like a, um, a budget on the side to, uh, because yes. there's a, it's usually the question that I, I've been asked for, from, for new clients and they say, yeah, but I'm, I supposed to sell, right? It should be like reimbursed from the sales, but I always say for no. them, no, put the money on the side, but, for how long would you recommend? I would say uh, for at least one month, put the money on the side, uh, $100 a day minimum, okay? Just if I'm going to be honest, like I've, I've uh, launched so many different products for so many dif different people in all the different categories. Under $100 a day, I really don't see anything. So $3,000 a month, um, yeah, it's going to make sales, but you should consider, like, first of all, there's the cash flow cycle. So you're putting your money down and then you're spending money on PPC today. You're making sales that's, that are going to get paid after two weeks. So <clears throat> there, you know, uh, you're not going to get the money back from the sale. It's not like Shopify. You see, as soon as you make the sale, it gets deposited into your account. So yeah. um, I would say keep $3,000 on the side just for PPC at a minimum, because under that I've seen, it's too hard to get the data. Uh, you know, we're trying to do too many different things uh, and it takes way too long. But again, if, if you have, you know, if you don't have that much money, what can you do? You, you know, you just have to do it cheaper. What do you think about like um, automations or different tools or they're so popular, uh, but there are different, you know, thoughts in the industry about different tools and, and algorithms and then AI based ideas. And do you recommend for beginners or short budgets uh, to use any tools, of course, without naming any, just the concept of putting something on, on, on uh, automated uh, machines, let's say, or something like that? Never, never. <clears throat> do not do any automation of any kind ever because think about it this way if these people can automate bits, why wouldn't they just automate the stock market? And, and then, you know, they can make money in the stock market. To, why are they selling a software to, you know, the automation, it's, it's a lazy thing. It's, it's a very lazy thing. So I, the, uh, right now in, in our agency, we have uh, tools. However, it's designed in a way that every single time you do something, all of the data is erased. So you are forced to go in, evaluate the, the data, the analytics from last week, see what changes you made last week and then put in the new criteria and then click a button and it will make the changes, but you have to go through these steps because it, it, let's say that you say, okay, if the bid is above this, lower the bid, if this increase, lower the bid. You could, you could do this once and then it takes you in the, in the wrong direction and you continue to do it again and again and again because the computer is not, is not so smart to say, if I lowered the bid by five cents and it went, uh, the ACOS went up, then I'm gonna increase the bid by five cents. And then, the, you know, it, it, it's just, it's an automated system. And, and at the end of the day, none of us really know. And, and when I used the tool, I called the person. I said, let me talk to your engineer. What's you, what are you guys doing? Why is this going in the wrong direction? No one is going to answer the question. Yeah. And so I personally uh, don't like, like automated tools at all. It, unless you're really good at PPC and you, you're at this point where you say, okay, I understand how everything works. I'm going to use a tool, but instead of automation, I'm going to, you know, do like a bulk uh, optimization or something like that. That's yeah. fine. Um, but at least in the beginning, you should do everything yourself manually. You should look at every single keyword, launch it, track it, make sure everything is moving in the right direction. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm against the automation tools, unfortunately. 
uh, if it's semi-automated and it says and and you can like click a button and, and it will do it brings you suggestions yes that's that's okay right because you can say okay last week i i you know i followed mina's advice and i lowered the bid by five cents but it went in the wrong direction so you're not going to keep following my advice. you're going to say okay well let me let me go in the other direction and then you go in the other direction and say okay th that was better so then you just keep doing that and and that's how it's like, like in an iteration because yeah. uh, you know i don't know you're just following the data you, you were here you did this it got worse then you do this yeah that's that's how honestly my entire two, two last done. questions uh, no worries. so so <clears throat> what's your thoughts about the other different campaigns like video ads display brands just a general thoughts about again from the shoes of beginners these come in later uh, you know they're they, they should come in later unless you're protecting your brand i think they should come in later because uh this opens you up to having multiple uh placements for the same keyword which means the people can spend twice by clicking your two different ads which will make you spend more money. So mm -hmm. if you're already tied on money, don't open this door for yourself where you can have someone click twice. Wait until you, you, you have a little bit more budget and you have a better system. So because one time I launched a bunch of video, it spent a lot of money. It looked like it had a really good ROAS, but the overall sales were, were unchanged. And this happened for a week and I lost money, obviously, because I was spending money with no additional sales. And I shut it down. Uh, this doesn't always happen, but it does. And if it does, you know, you don't want to have been like, oh man, I just lost a lot of money uh, when you're on a budget. So let's let's say I heard your advice. I waited. Now I'm ready to move on and spend some more money and do some, you know, extra uh, campaigns. What would you recommend to do next? Like video, video, video campaigns, yeah. video. Yeah, I would start with video. Video are like really good converting, and make sure that it's adding uh, to the total sales. After a video, I would do headline search ads um, and then headline search ads. I would see where you're performing really well in the top of the search first page and try at there. And again, make sure that it's adding to the overall revenue, not just spending looks like in the campaign manager. It's good, but your overall all revenue didn't change. OK, so last question that I really like to ask always the PPC experts is their opinion on what is coming up in, in 2022 in regards of Amazon is trying to kind of uh, bring in external traffic, right? To fight with Shopify, to fight with all the social commerce that is really rising right now. What's your ideas about what is, you know, is waiting for us in this sphere of PPC and what people should take into consideration that would be like, the mainstreams in this year i think uh, they're making uh, they're bringing some features from dsp so we might be able to start doing audience targeting right now in sponsor brand you can target everyone who visited your product or similar products but i think uh, in some point they're going to allow you to choose which asins you want to pull audiences from for what period of time and target them um so i think that's coming next and they're gonna give us more and more features in, in the in the campaign manager. So the ability to change bids more effectively, the ability to create campaigns more effectively, things like that. So I think they're, they're just, it's just gonna become more uh, empowering for the user to spend more money more you know, smartly. Okay, great, sounds good. Um, I wanna thank you a lot, a lot, a lot of thanks uh, for your tips Hopefully and advices. Hopefully this is beneficial for the group. You'll, you'll let is. me know the feedback. And, yeah. and I'm also going to do an, an, an extra thing uh, for, uh, uh, for the audience. And you were uh, really generous and, and, and offered uh, to help three of our uh, members of the community uh, to go through their uh, listings and everything and, and giving some advice. So what I'm going to do is uh, give it the weekend for the people to watch for the recordings and everything. And then I'm going to uh, do kind of a lottery for them. And uh, have three people uh, winners, and then uh, do the link for them. So this way, I'm making sure that more people are uh, kind of uh, will see, watch, of course, and be um, in line with what you have uh, just tell, told everybody. So thank you very much for your time once again. Uh, 
we'll be meeting you, I guess, in one of the conferences or next uh, yeah, Zoom calls. I hope so. And, uh, and get to know you better. Thanks. Awesome. Take it easy. Thanks, guy. Bye-bye.